the seventh ox herding picture in the series of ancient woodblocks called the ten ox herding pictures is called the bull or ox transcended. It's also called forgetting the ox. This stage represents non-duality. It is one's entry point into deep stage realization and the subtle refinements that clarify beyond this. It's a fundamental and irreversible shift in the way we experience reality. Specifically, the way we experience the senses moment to moment, the environment, time and space is altered permanently. I'll read it in its entirety and then we'll discuss specifics. Astride the bull, I reach home. I am serene. The bull too can rest. The dawn has come in blissful repose. Within my thatched dwelling, I have abandoned the whip and rope. Comment. All is one law, not two. We only make the bull a temporary subject. It is as the relation of rabbit and trap, a fish and net. It is as gold and dross, or the moon emerging from a cloud. One path of clear light travels on throughout endless time. These words are so beautiful, I don't even want to comment. But I will. What does it mean to have reached home? In some sense, with the first awakening, we feel like we've come home, certainly during the honeymoon period, a period of weeks or months where we feel in flow nearly constantly. We feel intimate, spacious, fluid. But after that honeymoon period, we tend to come into contact with a lot of difficult conditioning, repressed emotions, confusing perceptions, intermixed with periods of presence. This coming home is quite different. It represents an irreversible shift in how we perceive everything, how we perceive ourselves, our bodies, the world, other people, forms, shapes, sounds. A simple way of saying this is all boundaries are dissolved. The experience of form is seen to have been nothing but a thought the whole time. Now we know reality as reality. We know the formless nature of experience. Most importantly, there's nothing standing apart from experience. There's not a separate entity navigating a separate world. All of those relationships collapse into a flow of experience, a flow of appearances. Even the distinctness between the senses dissolves. We see that we have to construct a thought to know sound from sensation, from colors and shapes, from consciousness. The sense gates can only be separated through thought. And even then, they're not actually separated. It's just a reflective way of interpreting what's happening. The beauty of this is that what's happening becomes so clear, so obvious, that we really don't have to contemplate awake or asleep anymore. We don't have to concern ourselves with what presence is or how to be more present. Seeking is gone. Desire, aversion, gone. Because we see how things are. When everything is just 
this. When there aren't parts, when there aren't sides, boundaries, no top, no bottom, front or back, beginning or end. Then where can seeking arise? Where can aversion exist? Where can resistance exist? You could say this is when all forms blur into a formless dance of love, enjoyment, tranquility, serenity. So why is this called home? Because once it's realized, not just tasted or experienced momentarily, but realized, it's exquisitely clear that this is how it is. That the way we used to think about and perceive ourselves in the world was illusory. It was an overlay. Now, we're not just in contact with reality. We're seamless with reality. There's no one home. There's just home. And there's no way to be apart from home. Because there's no way to be apart from this. Because there's no one separate from this to come apart from it. There's nothing that can resist because there's only here, here, here. Fluidly dissolving into itself endlessly. And this requires no effort. This is why the narrative says, I have abandoned the whip and rope. It doesn't mean we no longer have regard for realization, for living truth. Quite the opposite. One's dedication, one's love for truth, for moment to moment expression of unfiltered reality takes a quantum leap. And yet it's clear, crystal clear, that there's nothing to do anymore as an individual to find reality, to clarify reality, to clarify or deepen presence. It's already here. It spontaneously carries itself deeper and deeper and deeper. This is a great relief, a great release. One enters a world of wonder, of enjoyment, of awe, of peace, of non-resistance, meaning everything is allowed here. Any emotion tone, any resistance pattern, any texture, taste, smell, sound, thought, even resistance becomes non-resistance when it's seen that there's nothing apart to resist it. This is paradoxical, but now paradox really is how this is. Paradox defines experience. The fullness is intimate and it's nothing specific. There are not specific objects. There are not even specific events or times or places. The intimacy is too radical to allow that type of separation or division. At this point, one experiences unconditioned reality nearly all the time. The giveaway here that this is non-duality is in the line, all is one law, not two. We only make the bull or the ox a temporary subject. It can feel like awakening or realization or our true nature or truth or presence is fleeting. It's something we're chasing or trying to cultivate a deeper knowing of. It can feel like a part of our life that we try to coordinate with other parts of our life. Something we do as we continue to compartmentalize our lives for a while. At this point, it's instinctually obvious that 
that was never the case. That realization is life itself. Enlightenment is just the way this is. It's not a statement about a person. It's not a statement about an event, a way of being, an experience. It's a statement about this, reality, unfiltered. No sides, no relationships, no seeking, no distance, no gain or loss. And I absolutely love the last line. One path of clear light travels on throughout endless time. What do we know about light? The special theory of relativity tells us that light from its perspective does not experience time. It exists at the beginning of the universe and the end of the universe simultaneously. It also does not experience distance. So it's at the beginning and the end simultaneously. So a single beam of light knows all times and places. Now, that might sound theoretical, but when you start to experience the light that outshines all experience, all knowing, all times and places, this experience, this knowing, which is not an experience, and it's too real to know, is wondrous beyond compare, and yet perfectly natural. One physicist describing the implications of quantum field theory said, in the entire universe there is one electron. In the entire universe there is one photon. Our minds can never get around this, can never get a hold of this. And yet we can experience that intimacy directly. As we stand up and walk, as we sit down and meditate, as we eat, as we emerge from sleep, as we hug or kiss a loved one, it's right there. I'll finish by reading a quote from the Thomas Gospel. These are the words of Christ. When you make the two into one, and when you make the inner like the outer, and the outer like the inner, and the upper like the lower, and when you make male and female into a single one, so that the male will not be male, nor the female be female, when you make eyes in place of an eye, a hand in place of a hand, a foot in place of a foot, an image in place of an image, then you will enter the kingdom. I want to encourage anyone who's on this path to keep at it. If you can sense something here, some truth, it's possible for you in this lifetime. Keep digging. Keep letting go. Keep investigating and inquiring. Keep dissolving those beliefs. Keep questioning those perceptual filters until they fall. You won't be sorry you made this journey.